Hi and welcome Entrepreneurs Unity Group here. I will break down the plot of the drama slash thriller film Papillon. Watch out and enjoy. In 1931, Mr. Henri Charrier called Papillon is a Parisian safe cracker. His typical day involves breaking into mansions, stealing jewelry, and delivering it to his boss. In exchange, he receives a substantial salary. After one of his heists turns out well, he goes to see his boss and turns over the loot. When asked by the second, did you keep any of the gems for yourself? Papillon politely declines. The manager then produces a bloodied man to show his employees as an example of what will happen to those who lie to him. Papillon appears to be shaken by the sight, but he keeps his calm and pays up anyhow. Soon later, he meets the woman who would become his girlfriend, Nanette, and gives her some jewels that he had been hiding from his boss. A man sees them and, in particular, the necklace Nanette is wearing as they leave. The pair has a passionate night together, planning their future together. Nanette hopes to escape the criminal underworld by moving to the country, but Papillon is skeptical that they can make a living there. An unexpected knock on the door interrupts the two the following morning while they are deep in conversation. Papillon opens it, and immediately a group of policemen surround and arrest him. The same person his employer had beaten up the night before is now accusing him of murder. Papillon tries to tell the police that he spent the night with his lover, but they arrest him anyhow. Nanette later pays Papillon a visit in the station, claiming she has come to testify. But he stops her, saying it's pointless. The cops aren't going to let Papillon go no matter what he does, and Papillon knows it. Instead, he intends to attempt an escape from jail. Papillon begs his girlfriend to move on with her life before he leaves, but she declines. After Nanette leaves, Papillon makes friends with Juliet, a fellow convict who explains that Papillon will need a lot of money to escape prison. Then he says he is the solution, indicating a seemingly innocuous individual called Louis Dega. As far as we can tell, Dega is a multimillionaire who was recently arrested on allegations of forging banknotes. To this day, he still keeps a lot of money in that dark, damp cellar. In the meantime, everyone is being transferred to a boat and shipped off to the French Guiana penal colony. While Dega is out at night, Papillon approaches him and offers his services in exchange for cash, which Dega rejects. Later that night, as the inmates are all sleeping, Dega witnesses the terrible murder of the man sleeping next to him. He had been targeted because money had been stashed in his stomach. The next morning, Dega accepts Papillon's offer since he is still terrified from the night before his tragedy. Dega will be shielded from harm until he reaches the penal colony, for the terms of the agreement. He expects his wife to rescue him shortly and has little interest in fleeing with Papillon. Dega is murdered again by the same assailant the following morning while everyone else is sleeping. He begins striking the victim slowly, but Papillon is there to save the day. After a fight breaks out between the two, the police arrive. Papillon receives a consequence, but he doesn't appear to mind. To him, the most important thing is that Dega is still alive. The ship finally docks at the penal colony the following morning. Juliet intentionally injures himself to be sent to the infirmary before the rest of the group may move forward. The infirmary is the weakest link in the security system, so that's where he plans to make his break. Papillon and the others make it to the jail colony after a while. There are a lot of dangerous criminals there, and a lot of them have been convicted of murder. Furthermore, the warden is a particularly vicious individual. He calls together all of the new convicts and breaks the news that they will never be able to get out of here. Two years in isolation if caught. If they are captured again, they will spend three years in isolation. A third escape attempt will result in exile to Devil's Island, a place where inmates often go insane. The warden further reveals that homicide offenders will be publicly beheaded via guillotine. The prisoners in the next scene are all given the task of gathering rocks. While Papillon is able to accomplish it quickly and easily, Dega is having trouble keeping up because he is not accustomed to manual labor. Papillon later bargains with a boatman for a substantial sum of money in exchange for a vessel. The man accepts and tells Papillon to meet him at the shore the next night. A dangerous-looking inmate hears about the scheme and quickly approaches Dega to demand payment. However, Papillon still comes to the rescue. He engages the man in combat and ultimately prevails, but not without taking some damage himself. After witnessing this, Dega knows he cannot go another day without Papillon. He will be long gone by the time his wife figures out how to break him out. Dega, therefore, has little choice but to go through with Papillon's escape plan. 
the inmates are gathered in the yard the following morning to watch an execution. It was discovered that Julet had murdered two guards in an attempt to flee. As a result, he will soon face the ultimate punishment, the guillotine. Julet is attached to the apparatus and beheaded in front of the other inmates as they watch in terror. The warden then gives the order for Papillon and Dega to transport the body to the cemetery. Dega suffers a breakdown on the road. He'd never seen a dead body before, and now he has to carry a man without his head. Papillon tries to convince him to stand up, but he just can't. Right on cue, the guards show there and order Dega to remove the body. One of them begins to give him a backlash for his refusal. Papillon snaps and, in an outburst of wrath, he hurls a rock at the guard's head, killing him instantly. Then he tries to escape, but he is too terrified to leave his position, and poor Dega is left frozen in place. Papillon reaches the shore late at night and encounters the boatman. He asks for the boat, but the man responds with laughter. Papillon looks back and sees several security personnel. The boatman, it turns out, had previously notified the warden of the escape. Every time he reveals the whereabouts of an evacuating prisoner, he receives a sizable reward. The warden brings Papillon back to the prison shortly afterward and gives him some encouraging news. Seeing as the guard he struck earlier is still alive, Papillon will not be executed. The alternative is that he be sent in solitary confinement on a remote island. Once there he discovers that the area is deserted and dark. Only one rule applies, be quiet. Inmates at the old prison had more freedom to move about and interact with one another, in the new prison, they are all crammed into one tiny cell. It's illegal to have any kind of conversation with oneself. In addition the quality and quantity of the food are also subpar. Papillon is only provided with a single meal, a bowl of what appears to be an unsettling soup. In contrast, one day he unexpectedly gets a coconut. There's a note inside promising him fresh coconuts each and every day. Papillon is excited to eat it since he knows Dega prepared it. After a few weeks of this, the warden figures out what's going on and murders the guard in charge of serving meals. Then he goes up to Papillon and directly asks him who is to blame. The latter doesn't shed much light, which was to be expected. Because of this, Warden has reduced his already meager ration even further as punishment. After one month, Papillon's malnourishment had left him severely undernourished. Again, the Warden approaches him, this time holding a plate of food and inquiring as to who had delivered him the coconuts. Still, Papillon keeps quiet the same way he did before. The Warden is so angry that he chooses to keep the prisoner in the dark for the duration of his sentence. With no one to talk to, no food, and no sight, Papillon is now in a scary scenario. The peace and quiet, along with his starvation, are slowly driving him crazy. Papillon is escorted to the jail hospital after he grows so weak that he can no longer walk there on his own. Dega, by sheer coincidence, has also recently begun employment there. Over the course of the past year and a half, he has earned the warden's trust, which has resulted in his receiving preferential treatment. Dega eventually meets up with his friend and finds out that he's only being crazy. Papillon had no other choice except to act irrationally if he wanted to get back to the prison, which he did. The two resume their earlier discussion of an exit strategy. Now they've picked out two additional inmates to be their hands and feet. Papillon is looking for someone powerful and shrewd, whereas Dega would rather aid someone who is frequently exploited. They end up signing on the bully-prone Macherette and the brutish Cellier. Next, Dega hands over all of his cash to Cellier, who uses his influence to get a boat. The next day, the quartet had planned their escape during a movie showing. To the point where he considers quitting, Dega's anxiety about the situation is palpable. In spite of this, his best friend Papillon convinces him that this is their one chance at liberation. The time to act is now. Next, we'll be transported to the movie marathon. Dega is seen making beverages for a group of government officials who have just arrived. He prepares them for the robbery by dosing them with drugs and then waiting for the right opportunity to escape through the front door. Rain begins to fall outside as Papillon and the others wait inside for Dega's return. As a result, the electricity goes off. Papillon resists Cellier's suggestion that they make a hasty retreat and look for a different route because he is afraid. He won't abandon his pal in favor of an adventure. It's a good thing Dega shows up just in time with the keys. The prisoners sneak out of the facility when the lights go out. Finally, they come to a point where the only way to get back to land is to leap. 
After Papillon, Cellier, and Majorite have all landed safely, the power returns just as Dega is about to touch down. Because of this, he is thrown off balance and breaks his leg on the floor. Cellier advises they abandon him because he can't move at this point, but Papillon still refuses. Together with Maturette, he carries the injured Dega to the shore, where a boat is waiting. In little time at all, the four of them are aboarding the boat and setting sail into the night. It's been hours since they escaped, yet the next morning, Cellier realizes that they haven't come very far. This is due to the fact that the boat is extremely little and cannot support the weight of four persons. It is then that they notice a storm is on their way. With time running out, Cellier throws Maturette into the water and chases after Dega, but Papillon stands in the way, and a bloody battle ensues. Cellier gets the upper hand due to his size advantage and is about to kill Papillon when Dega attacks him from behind with a knife. The two then toss him overboard and assist Maturette in getting back on board. Finally, the massive storm swallows them up, and the screen goes black. After waking up, they discover that they are actually on an island. Turns out, a nearby town spotted them drifting in the water and came to their aid. Papillon is lost and wandering about the place until a nun approaches him and explains that they are in Colombia. In addition, she states her familiarity with their background and actions. After Papillon tries to explain himself, the nun tells him he can go free so long as he repents. Papillon sees his closest friend later that day and convinces him they need to get out of there right away. But Dega says no more deals with her because their agreement has ended. After years of running, he now wants to put down roots. Papillon abandons him and moves on to Maturette, but he has grown accustomed to the town and, in particular, the women. Therefore, Papillon chooses to abandon the location. But as he draws near, he sees two police officers pull up to the boat. The malevolent nun, it seems, informed the police of their whereabouts. In a panic, Papillon rushes back to Dega to help him stand up, but by then the police have already seen them. As a result of the shooting, Maturette dies instantly, while Papillon and Dega are captured and sent back to jail. Time jump ahead five years, Papillon has served out his time in solitary prison and is being sent to Devil's Isle. He is taken aback to see Dega standing there. In light of the fact that he drugged the cop's beverages, it's clear that his penalty was increased. After returning from Colombia, Dega was promptly transported to Devil's Island. After five years apart, the two can't wait to see each other again. Although they have both aged, their relationship and bond are as strong as ever. In the evening, as Papillon watches the waves roll in, inspiration strikes. He walks up to Dega and says that they can go to the nearest shore by building a small raft and riding the waves. But Dega isn't going along with it this time. He says that for the past five years, he has had a trouble-free existence. And now that he knows his wife has married someone else, he sees no reason to return. Even yet, he makes the decision to help Papillon construct the raft out of coconuts. The two buddies give each other a final embrace the following morning before parting ways. Papillon then discards the raft into the water and enters the water for himself. The strategy seems to be working, as he is being carried by the waves. Dega's eyes well up with tears as he flies away. The final scene transports us to 1967. Since he is still on the French authorities' wanted list, Papillon has taken refuge in Venezuela. However, he is given a full pardon for all of his wrongdoing in 1969. Papillon has documented the entire ordeal in a memoir that he intends to release soon. The film concludes as he embarks on a trip to Paris after an absence of 38 years.